Welcome to Kit and Crochet. Today I'm going to show you how to do Tunisian full stitch. So we're going to start with a regular Tunisian foundation row. And I'm just going to do a short one just so you can get the idea for this stitch. I'm going to skip the first chain because this loop counts as the stitch for the first chain. And I'm going to pick up a loop in all of the rest of the chains. chain one. I always like to place a stitch marker here through the two loops of this last chain before I close just to make sure I know where I'm going to insert my hook when I get there back to the end of the row next turn. So I'm going to yarn over and pull through two until I get to the end just to close this normally. Okay so for Tunisian full stitch it's a little bit different because I'm not actually going to work into any of the loops on these stitches. So for, all, for this row, I'm going to work to the right in the gap to the right of this first stitch. So I'm going to insert my hook through this hole, yarn over and pull up a loop. Now through this hole in between the stitches. You just need to remember whether you started on the right or the left of the stitch, because otherwise you might accidentally increase or decrease your stitch count. And on this very last stitch, instead of going through the hole, I'm going to go so this would be the hole to the right of the last stitch right here. Instead, I'm going to work into this stitch so I have a nice even edge. Now I'll chain one, move my stitch marker. Now I'll close normally. So that was the first part. Now on the next row, instead of working to the right of the stitch, I'm going to work to the left of the stitch, so I'm going to alternate. So now here's my previous stitch, I'm going to work in the hole to the left of it. And then in my last stitch. So you can see I'm not gaining or losing any stitches. I'm working on the right side, and then the left side, and then the right side, and then the left side in alternating rows. So this creates a fun texture, and I think it's actually one of the easiest of the Tunisian crochet stitches, and I just think it's really pretty. The only trick is making sure that you don't accidentally increase your stitch count. So that time we worked on the left side of the stitch, so now I'm going to start by going on the right side. So I'm going in the hole in between the two stitches. And since I was working on the right side, I don't want a stitch in this hole, right? Because that would increase my stitch count. That would be an extra stitch. So I'm going to just do my last stitch here. Chain one. Move my stitch marker. And close normally. I'll do one more row here. So last time I was on the right side of the stitch. This time I'll be on the left side. Go in here, on the left side, and you only really need to think about the right versus the left side on the last stitch of the row and the first stitch of the row, because otherwise you're just working into every single hole between the stitches, so that's pretty easy. This is the stitch that I used on the Geometric Tunisian Blanket, which is one of my favorite projects I've ever done. Uh, it's my son's baby blanket. I also used it on the a sweater design I did for furls for their crochet along. So this is Tunisian full stitch. That's the front. The back is still going to have the bumps like most Tunisian crochet stitches so it is going to make it thicker and something to be aware of that I learned while designing that sweater is that you're going to need to increase the amount of ease that you add to your garment if you're making garments because of the thickness of this. As it curves around it's going to take up more space. So if you're designing garments with this stitch or with really any of the main Tunisian crochet stitches, add in some extra inches because when you start wearing it, when you curve it around your body, it's going to need a little bit of extra room. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe. Happy crocheting!